Hello teachers, magandang hapon. Good afternoon to all and welcome to another session of Abiva Teach webinar series. So, may ibig sabihin po yung teach, no? So, this is another session for teaching and engagement amid the community hurdles, okay? So, for our topic today, it's melts to the max or maximizing the melts, okay? So, from the title alone, you will have a sense that uh, we shall think of ways. I shall present some ways as to how you can maximize the most essential learning uh, competencies. Okay. So, this is the, I, I think, the latest version of the MELKS, K-12 MELKS, uh, which was shared by a friend from uh, the Department of Education. No? All right, so I'd like to emphasize that the MELKS is not a departure from the K-12 uh, curriculum, all right? So what you, see, what you will see in the MELKS are actually called from the K-12 curriculum. All right, so I'd like to clarify that uh, the learning competencies no, in the MELKS are not actually reduced. Huh? Kasi baka mamaya magkaroon kayo ng, ng konsepto na pinaikli, binawasan. No, no, they are not uh, reduced. But uh, we put together no, the competencies that will uh, bring out the most essential learning. Okay, so for this session, let's try to answer the following uh, questions. You know, we call this essential questions. You know? Actually, essential questions are vehicles. You know? It's like a, a vehicle that we use to uh, reach you know, the most essential uh, learning. Okay, so the first uh, question is, Aiming to develop the most essential learning competencies, which do you think are the most essential in your learning area? And how were you able to identify which competencies are the most essential? Okay, so as we go through the different uh, items here in this session, please bear in mind these two essential questions. Okay, so um, Director Joyce Andaya in her webinar um, mentioned or even emphasized no, that the learning competencies must have the quality of, uh, of having this endurance. No? Actually, ano ba ibig sabihin ng endurance? Diba? Endurance training. Yun yung dapat ito ay tumatagal. No? So, uh, we have to remember that uh, enduring understandings are insights that a learner gains by doing the work of understanding. So that means that it's not being transmitted no, to our learners. We design learning activities so that they are the ones, okay, doing, making, arriving at their own understanding. So that is... Uh, they will have to make connections, okay, about learning that will help them make sense of what is already there, okay? So, when we say essential learning, this is the learning that will stay with our learners, okay? So, um, if we have to look at the learning competencies, no, in the K-12, to no, yung hindi pa na, hindi pa, Ginawang melts, no? We have to look at what uh, competencies are worth uh, being familiar with, no? So it's very important that uh, students must know them, must learn them, and they have to be familiar with them, okay? Para pag narinig halimbawa nila yung salitang virus, ano ang kaibahan nito sa bacteria, no? Okay? 
pag narinig nila yung uh, quarantine, yung salit ng quarantine, ano ang ano ang uh, pagkakaiba nito sa uh, para ikinulong, no? Yung yung konsepto ng ng detention, di ba? So they have to be familiar first with the concepts, the information, and of course, they should see the importance of knowing knowing it and doing it and then they arrive at big ideas or what we call the enduring understandings okay so with those little little uh, components no, of a certain concept they arrive at the big ideas that will help them make sense of the things that they already have understood now, uh, I remember when I was in Malaysia, there was a big, uh, there was a big uh, bulletin board display in one school. No, it says there, we follow because we understand. We follow because we know and understand. Something like that. So, uh, with that, I thought that uh, they are actually, you know, uh, putting forth. Uh, teaching, developing the most essentials. All right. So I got this uh, information from uh, a presentation of uh, of a deaf ed official. No. So uh, para po para sa mga teachers sa public schools, um, we have a standard, no, uh, understanding of what an essential learning competency is. Okay, so we say a learning comp competency is essential if it is aligned with the national, state, and or local standard frameworks. All right, so if you have to review you know, your curriculum development course, you know, all curriculum has three important uh, goals. You know? What are these three important goals? Number one is intellectualism. Right? We need our students to develop higher order thinking skills. We need them to uh, use no, their intellect to solve problems. No? We have to develop in them how to think okay, and to reason out. All right. And the next one is um, uh, that sense of nationalism no? so that they know their identity. No? And that love for uh, one's country will propel them to really work hard for the development of, yeah, of, of his country. Okay? Kasi, uh, kaya nga natin tinuturuan no? ang mga bata kasi gusto natin maging mabuti silang mga mamamayan. Okay? And then the third... Um, uh, the third goal is vocational preparation. Eh? So we need to develop, okay, Filipinos who uh, are prepared for the world of work. No? Yeah, prepared for the world of work. That their competencies must match to those that are needed in their future uh, work. Okay? So number two characteristic is that the learning competency must connect the content to higher concepts across content areas. Okay, so it should not be limited in one subject, okay, or in one event, learning event, but the child has to see its connection to higher. Uh, Concepts, no? yung, yung gen, greater generality of the concept. And then, the learning competency must be applicable to real-life situations. No? Because if it cannot be transferred to real-life situations, what's the use of, of uh, developing these concepts? Okay? And the fourth one, um, if students left school after this grade, for example, if, if a student uh, would decide to stop going to school, 
it would be import important for them to have this competence above many others. Why? Because they will have a use for these competencies. And then, uh, lastly, it wouldn't be expected that most students would learn this through their uh, parents, parents' communities if not taught at school. Therefore, uh, it should not be limited within, uh, within the walls of the classroom or within the parameters of the subject, okay, or the learning area, okay? Uh, an essential learning competen competency must be useful, no, in solving the problems at home and their uh, communities, even if they may not be taught in school, okay? All right. So, yeah. So, what are the processes no, that uh, that has brought about? What are the processes that have brought about uh, this uh, essential learning competencies? Okay. So. Uh, there has to be decisions, no? Which uh, competencies must be retained, no? Um, how do we uh, arrive at that decision if it satisfies the endurance criteria, right? So, uh, it, it must contribute to the enduring understanding of the learner, okay? Yeah. And then... Uh, some competencies are merged or clustered, no? Right? And some competencies are actually dropped, no? If they are too specific, no? Too specific in the sense that it looks like uh, a direction, no? Uh, in, in doing something or in doing an activity. So an objective or a competency is not just uh, limited to doing something, okay? And of course, if it keeps on recurring, all right, uh, over, over the quarters or within the grade levels, then um, some of these competencies in the higher levels are actually dropped, okay? And some competencies are rephrased so that they will be uh, concise, all right? So, what conditions guided you in your decision as the curriculum implementer? Yes, my dear teachers, you are curriculum implementers, no? The success of the MELCs, the success of, stu of our students learning from, from this uh, uh, curriculum highly depends on the kind of uh, preparation we make so that our students will learn the most essential no, competencies from, uh, from our lessons. All right. So there are many learning design options. If you have to uh, look at the, this slide, no, uh, we see the many moderating variables. Okay? You have to decide the modality. All right. So, fully online, you can opt uh, fully online if your uh, students are actually uh, hooked to the uh, internet, pag malakas talaga yung internet dun sa community, or you can do blended, which is 50% uh, online or 50% uh, face-to-face, uh, -face, okay? And of course, blended maybe 25 to 50% online, okay? So, we also have web-enabled uh, modality and, of course, the face-to-face -face in areas where they will be allowed, no, to hold classes face-to-face. -face. But in many communities, in many divisions, uh, there is no other way but yeah, to, to use remote learning modalities okay now we have to, to consider also the pacing no yeah we have self 
space. No? It is actually open entry and open exit where the student can decide no? Yan. when to work on the activity. No? But of course, we have to uh, make them realize that there are certain conditions and deadlines that they should meet. No? It can be class-based. No? Yan. Kasama nyo dyan yung, halimbawa, if you have uh, 40 students in one class, yan, how, how will you be able to um, deliver no? the, the lesson okay, remotely? And of course, there is class space with some self space. No? Kung baga, imagine ninyo na uh, it can be done by the whole class or yeah, there are activities which can be done by individuals or smaller groups. No? Kaya nga tayo nag-prepare uh, pa ng mga, ang tawag dyan, mga, mga iba't-ibang uh, activities. No? Yan, yung mga, I don't, uh, how do we call it? We call it the uh, developmentally appropriate learning activities and uh, diverse no, activities. All right. Then, we have to also consider student-teacher ratio. No? Maswerte if we have one teacher to uh, less than 35 students. No? And it can go to one uh, teacher as uh, the learning moderator to yan, more than uh, 1,000 learners. No? So, Pwede naman po na uh, if, if teachers will agree no, to, to put together like uh, three classes, tapos isa yung magtuturo, pwede rin po yun. Or ilagay sa isang module ang, ang lesson, tapos it will be distributed to uh, many students. No? Pwede yung halimbawa, uh, magsama-sama yung mga pang-morning, Bawa uh, sections 1 to 3 and then in the afternoon sections uh, 4 to 6 no? so that we can really maximize the, the modules. Mas maganda po, ang recommendation ko, um, wag nyo pong pasulatan yung module. Lagyan nyo po sila ng parang mga answer sheets. No? Yan. Para yung mga modules na naandun usually yung mga inputs ninyo, uh, the, those modules can still be used by the next set of students. Okay? Now, when it comes to pedagogy, and how are we going to teach it? It may be yan, expository. Nagli-lecture kayo doon, no? Yan. O kaya naman, gumamit kayo ng lecture mula sa Khan Academy. Yan. Nag-explain yung teacher doon, then that's expository. Or, it may be series of practice exercises until the skill has been mastered. Or, it, we can use the exploratory strategy, no? where uh, what is more important is the insights no? the students may be able to gain out of their discovery, no? out of their exploration. No? And uh, of course, collaborative. No, when uh, students are also asked, no, uh, what they actually want to learn for a particular unit or for a particular week, no, and uh, collaboration may also be done among students. Okay. Now, so uh, instruction is never complete without assessment, no. Kaya nga, uh, nasa matrix sa kaduluhan doon ay yung assessment. But uh, it has been suggested that uh, formative assessment is more useful than the summative assessment. So how can formative assessment be useful if we really uh, uh, look at the, 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 the outputs of our students and give them feedback? Okay? So, Yan. Now, so we have to also look at our role as teachers, no? As teacher, as online teachers, na tayo, no? So, 
uh, we have to decide no, if uh, we have to do active instruction online, which I think will pose so much challenges. No? Because uh, we have to understand the kind of uh, internet connectivity we have. All right? Or we can have a small presence online. No? And we... Maybe we can appear at the start of the unit, we explain to them what they should do on the different activities, tapos sila na. And then, yeah, meron na namang meet up, you know, mag-meeting na naman at the end of the unit. Or, yan, pwedeng wala yung teacher. Halimbawa, pwedeng yung module na lang. No? Remember that the module... Uh, must be something, must be a, a, a material that should talk, no? that should teach the uh, students. Okay? Now, we have to also consider the student's role online. Okay? <clears throat> what do we expect them to do? No? Do we want them to listen or read, complete problems or answer questions? Okay? Explore simulations and resources. And, or uh, maybe uh, we can ask them to collabor collaborate, no? Lalo na, di ba, sa mga communities na magkakapitbahay yung mga, mga bata, no? Dun sa, ano, COVID-free community. They can work on some tasks collaboratively. And then, uh, we also uh, want to look at this condition if you want to use self-paced or the asynchronous uh, uh, communication, no? How do we want to communicate uh, with them? Is it self-paced? Is it a live event, no? Or it can be a blend of self-paced and live event, no? And of course, yeah. Uh, how do we, uh, how do we give feedback, or how do we get? Feedback from our students, no? It may be automated, no? Automatic na yun pag sumagot halimbawa sila ng, ng Google quiz, no? Agad, agad makikita ng bata yung key to correction, no? Machicheckan nila. Or, yan, they will have to wait for a, a, a meeting online with the teacher to give feedback. Or, okay, while students are working and we see them working, we can actually give feedback no, to guide them formatively, okay? And of course, we can also um, make use of uh, peer feedback, no? The, the feedback coming from uh, the classmates, no? Again, peer feedback will work in face-to-face, -face, no, meeting. But then again, I see another, ano eh, another opportunity for students to col uh, work collaboratively if they belong to uh, one, okay, community. Yung walang COVID threat. Alright. So, how can teachers maximize the milks? Yan. So, sabi nga natin, it is not a reduction of the K to 12 curriculum. No? We don't reduce it. Actually, we just uh, put together, all right, the enabling uh, competencies, enabling objectives, so that uh, we can have a, uh, a, a a grand statement, no? Okay, a statement, a full statement of of what students are expected to know and uh, what they are expected to do with what they know. All right. So, I see one way of maximizing the milks is curriculum integration. Okay? Siguro yung mga medyo may edad-edad na na teacher, yung mga 20 years na sa service, 30 years na sa service, probably you have been trained, no? How to integrate, no? Yan how to do integrative teaching, okay? So, integrative or integrated curriculum may be also uh, be viewed as a, as a way of teaching interdisciplinarily, 
Okay? And we also look at, okay, the themes, no? Especially in the lower grades, no? We, we uh, design, no? The activities in, in, in a week time, okay, that will, that will focus on a theme. Or it may be also a synergistic teaching. No? There is a synergy among subject teachers on uh, the essential learning uh, competencies no? that, should, that, should be, that should be developed no? in one uh, unit. Okay? So an integrated, an integrated study is one in which children broadly explore knowledge in various aspects related to certain aspects of the environment. Okay, so it is very important that yeah, teachers in designing the modules should know the environment where the students are, especially their learning environment. Okay, so these are the skills and knowledge developed and applied in more than one area of study. It views learning and teaching in a holistic way and reflects the real world, which is interactive. Right? When we try to learn something, we work on it. And so we interact with the material. And <clears throat> curriculum integration is, of course, a knowledge view and curricular approach that consciously applies methodology and language from more than one discipline to examine the central theme, issue, problem, topic, or experience. Okay? So it is, uh, it is good for, for example, for a level, grade level teachers, no? those teachers teaching in one uh, level or grade to put their heads together so that they can, yeah, they can, they can arrive at uh, the, the most no? uh, essential learning uh, activities for our students. Okay. So, integrative teaching is synonymous with interdisciplinary curriculum, okay? Why interdisciplinary? Uh, one learning area is actually at one discipline. For example, reading is a discipline in itself, no? Although it is a, sub, it is a tool subject, no? But if the teacher will have to look and learn, no? To, to, to learn, okay, how... A child learns to read, it is actually a discipline in itself, okay? History is a discipline in itself, all right? Uh, physical education is a discipline in itself. Lahat po yan ay mahalaga, okay? So, it is a curriculum organization that cuts across subject matter lines to focus upon comprehensive life problems or broad areas of study that brings together various segments of curriculum into meaningful associations okay so um it's 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 the duty or it's the role of the teachers no to make every learning activity okay meaningful so that students will see the importance of of learning a particular uh, skill or knowledge Okay, so in general, all definitions of integrated curriculum are, or interdisciplinary curriculum include, okay, so it's actually the, the merging of subjects, no? combination of subjects. For example, you combine uh, science, okay, chemistry, and, um, and, and uh, PLE, no? Yeah. Yung, or HE, no? Yan, home economics and livelihood education. O paggawa ng kaong, syempre, hindi ka lang basta gumagawa. No? We have to understand how, what is the chemistry behind it. So, teachers uh, uh, teaching, no? Those different subject areas can put their heads together and uh, remove you know, the barriers okay of this uh, uh, subjects okay then there must be emphasis on projects why 
because the project is the tangible proof, no? Uh, tangible evidence of their learning. When we say project, yeah, it may be something that is, uh, it may be a learning project, okay, or a physical project, no? And then, yeah, we have to look at the textbooks as references, no? And we have to go beyond the textbooks. But there are textbooks that are bundled with uh, e-learning, no? e-books no? for e-learning. So, magandang tignan din yun. Maybe we can look for, for some uh, uh, information, some materials from these textbooks. And then, we have to look at the relationship among these concepts. Right? Thematic units as organizing principles. Halimbawa, uh, tignan natin yung, yung time of the year. Kung halimbawa, anihan sa isang, sa isang uh, community. No? Yung school ay nasa, community, nasa isang farming community. Okay? So, how will the learning revolve around that particular thing? No? And of course, there must be flexible schedule. No? Kaya, pag tinig na natin ang scheduling, no? Yan. Medyo meron tayong give and take as to uh, which subject will be highlighted in one, in, in, in one session. But when children, when students look at it, it is actually learning the, the, holistically, no? The, the sessions for that week. And of course, we also observe flexible grouping. Okay? Yeah. So, this is something that I would want you to think about. No? Uh, looking at the milks, we see that still uh, there are clear demarcation lines. No? There are clear uh, divisions of uh, subjects. No? Yeah. Kaya nga, kailangan pa nating i-schedule, halimbawa, ang isang araw kung 8 to 9, English, 9 to 10, uh, physical uh, mape, no? Kasi ang, ang ating thinking ay ganun pa din, no? Uh, subject uh, specific curriculum, okay? Unfortunately, okay, the reality of this is situation is that students tend to learn what they were taught. So, if they still continue learning, no, in 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 subject areas, no, walang integration, all right? And if teachers teach separation and discontinuity, okay, that is what our students will learn. They still look at learning as something fragmented. Okay? So, this is, I think, a, a high time to maximize the curriculum as to view the competencies uh, uh, with, with the mind of, with, with integration in mind. Okay. So, Again, these are some of the questions that uh, I'm just posing no, to you. Pwede niyong pag-isipan, pwede rin hindi pag-isipan. <laughs> okay, so did your school engage in integrative teaching before? No? Baka meron pang mga, mga skills na naiwag dyan na pwede niyong gamitin ngayon na kayo ay nagpe-prepare ng inyong mga modules, no? All right, and so why don't some schools engage in integrative teaching? As a matter of fact, no, uh, when we look at the the milks, it is not really about integrative teaching, okay? But we can actually do this, no, uh, on, on on our own in collaboration with our fellow teachers. So August pa naman po ang umpisa ng klase, June. July, baka pwede tayong mag, mag, ano, magsama-sama at tignan paano natin uh, palalawakin no? yung, mga, yung, 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 mini, uh, yung most essential learning competencies. Okay? 
So, hindi kasi yung simple na na tayo ay nag-reduce lang. Alright. So, reasons why uh, many schools no, do not adapt uh, integration. So, let's look at the perspective of the administration. No? Yan. So, they think that team teaching, interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary coordination requires more planning time. Yes, it, sa umpisa, no? Actually, those who are doing lesson study, nako, calling uh, Ma'am May Gali, uh, Galicia, no? Of, payabas uh, na ba siya ngayon? Yan. Siya talagang, pre-COVID pa lang, uh, talagang pinapromote niya yung lesson study. And doing lesson study is actually making interdisciplinary coordination. Okay? So, some some administrators uh, believe that, yan, it, it will require one teacher to work with the same class at the same time. Okay? Now, let's look at the epistemological uh, reason why uh, some schools do not um, do not adapt um, integrative teaching. Okay, they still believe that disciplines are different. No? Subjects are ends in themselves. Integration undermines integrity of these uh, different disciplines. Okay, now if we have to look at the positive no, side of integration, all right, uh, we listed no, so, so many reasons here. No? Uh, so some administ administration, uh, administrators believe that uh, integration will make the, the most efficient use of resources and time. Okay, curriculum objectives can be achieved at the same time. Okay? Let's look at the cognitive aspect, no? How do we really learn, no? Brain-based research suggests that learning is more effective or meaningful when it is integrated, integrated and embedded in connection, okay? So, di ba gano'n naman natin tinitignan ng ating pagkatuto, no? Yung kabuuan. Sa, sa kaduluduluhan, ano yung kabuuan ng ating natutunan? Okay, so epistemological. So integration transcends artificial distinctions between uh, disciplines, no? Or bodies of knowledge, no? Yan. Nung nagtuturo nga ako noon ng grade 2, sabi ng mga grade 2 ko, pagdating doon sa fourth quarter science, no? Landforms and waterforms. Sabi nila, ma'am, why do we have to discuss landforms and waterforms where in fact we already have uh, discussed it in Makabayan. No? Arbe kasi nun eh. O, bigla ko, oo oh, oh, nga, no? Pero hindi pwedeng i-skip, no? Still, it's in the uh, curriculum. So, what I did is to bring a physical map and yan, uh, make, make them look at the landforms and waterforms. And I told them to list the words, no, or the terminologies that are foreign to them, no, unfamiliar to them. Kaya mga nakita ko, uh, ano ba yung mga nakita ko? Uh, ano yun, yung, yung gulf, kasi hindi yun, ano, no? And then yung strait, no? Uh, ano pa, uh, peninsula, mga ganyan. And binigyan ko lang sila ng worksheet, no, or task card. So they listed, they listed the the unfamiliar terms and then they define it no they define it the way they see it in the map and they gave examples okay so in that case yan uh yung makabayan at saka yung science kasi naman sa grade to self contained uh, uh, self contained ang mga teachers diyan so I, I i i listen to them and see the wisdom no that uh that was drawn from that uh, experience. Okay? Now, psychological, no? It enables learners to develop integrated personalities in which all parts of their school lives are interrelated, no? 
most especially now that uh, many of our students will be staying at home okay to learn no so uh, the more that we need to show them that learning is not compartmentalized okay and it is also practical no in a knowledge rich society students are better empowered by the acquisition of skills than by accumulating greater quantities of materials no wala po yan sa padamihan ng modules no uh, sa isang module siguro may iba't ibang lessons and then doon sa mga iba't ibang lessons na yon we target ayan uh, the uh, we 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 emphasize no the skills that will be acquired by our students okay so skills transcend Okay, the subject matter. Okay, so, all right. So, uh, wait. All right. So, these are the ways to integrate. Okay, so, ready na po ba kayo? Uh, Papakitaan ko po kayo ng uh, parang mga mind uh, mind guides no on how you can envision integration to maximize the milks. All right? So, the first thing, okay, that you can do or you may do is concept mapping, no? Bago po kayo uh, mag-immerse diyan sa paggagawa niyo ng module, yan try to map the concepts no so you will clearly see no you will clearly see uh what concepts can be uh put together okay yeah what concepts can be connected all right so you can also think of a team no kaya pwedeng anim na kahon yan dyan, no so Anim na lessons or limang lessons, one lesson each day. But each lesson, okay, will contribute to the uh, theme. Alright? Yan. Halimbawa, ano ba? Halimbawa, um, yung tungkol sa ano, uh, pagkain ng masustansyang mga pagkain, no? Ay, sayang. July, wala rin silang pasok, no? Maganda sana yon sa Nutrition Month, no? Pero pwede pa rin naman natin siyang uh, i-discuss, no? So, there are a series of lessons that will lead to to that uh, theme of healthy eating, no? Yan. So, meron dyang input ang science teacher, may input ang, ang, ang language teacher, may input ang uh, araling panliputan teacher. All right. So, we can also thread the competencies. Tutuhugin, yun ang term ko dyan, no? Tutuhugin yung mga competencies, no? So that uh, we see that one competency builds on another competency until, until, yan, the child will be able to uh, master a certain uh, competency. Tandaan po na hindi halimbawa uh, yung ano uh, yung competency na uh, reading for the main idea or getting the main idea of a text of a selection so it's not just like that no there are other competencies okay prerequisite competencies that should have been mastered first before they see okay the main idea no yan kaya tinuturuan muna natin silang tumingin no ng mga sentences no and in that paragraph there may there may be a sentence where the main idea is explicit so what happens if the main idea is implied no it entails another development of okay a skill no so tutuhugi natin yung mga competencies okay now this is for the teachers, no? You see a Venn diagram, all right? And uh, you can expand the three circles to 
uh, to the many, uh, no? to the, to, to the uh, teachers in the grade level, okay? So, what you will do is to, ayan, plan as a team and also to do team teaching. When we say team teaching here, in, 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 in this uh, sense, no? Uh, maaring mag-assign tayo halimbawa ng teacher na o oh, sige for this time ikaw gagawa ng module uh, sa next week ika, uh, ito o kaya dun sa isang buong linggo hati-hati tayo kung ano yung ating gagawin no from uh, from the point of views of the different points of view of the, of the different uh, subject teachers okay so ito yung tinatawag nating team teaching. Kaya halimbawa, ako nun, uh, <laughs> hindi ako makakapagturo ng music, no? Yan. Hindi, hindi ako ganun siguro yung technical, pero kung halimbawa, papakinggan nila akong kumanta, no? <laughs> halimbawa, ituturo ko yung, yung, yung pitch, no? So, hindi ko yun kaya. Inaamin ko, hindi ko yun kaya. So, I work with uh, another teacher, yan, and ang ginagawa niya, siya yung nagre-record. Nagre-record niya yung, yung boses niya, no? So, siguro ngayon, uh, sa remote learning, yan, at mapaghahandaan, we can do a lot of, yan, team planning. Alright. So, let's move on to the different uh, integrative teaching strategies, no? So when we say uh, to integrate, it's to put things together, no? All right, we can put things together in terms of the lesson and the real life situation, the lesson and a lesson from other subjects. Okay, the lesson and uh, meaningful uh, learning activities, the lesson and their intelligences and learning styles, no? So what's important here is we really need to know our students, no? Um, paano ba mangyayari yun? Halimbawa, um, yung mga grade 4 sa pasukan, okay? Siguro naturuan nyo yun nung sila ay grade 3. O kaya meron kayong mga konting information about certain students, no? Yan. Uh, pwede nating uh, gawan, no? Nang paraan para yung kanyang need ay address. Alright? Uh, this morning, I received a, a happy news no, from a parent. Okay? Nag-PM siya sa akin. Uh, sabi niya, Ma'am, yung anak ko pumasa po sa UPCAT, no? Eh, yung estudyante kong yun, grade 2, no? Grade 2 siya nun. Pero, ano siya eh, masyado, masyado siyang introvert, no? Pero nakita ko na meron siyang mas, ano, meron siyang mga kayang gawin, no? Na, na hindi niya siguro alam na yun ay ma-appreciate ng kanyang mga kaklase. Okay? So, uh, may isang learning activity kami, no? Ang lesson namin, uh, I, the, the lesson was about uh, prepositions, no? These little words, no? Yan, prepositions. So, uh, I group them into smaller groups. I group the class into smaller groups and ask them to uh, design a game, you know, where they have to write the the instructions, you no. Know? So, yon ang game ay parang ano eh, uh, treasure hunt, you no. Know? It was treasure hunt. Yan. Kaya makita natin yung mga prepositions na ginagamit ng bata so that they will be able to guide no uh, their 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 classmates to really look for the uh, the treasure no so as early as grade 2 they were able to design games no and so this this child na na ano na binabanggit ko uh, she was able no to to clearly write no the directions in such a way that uh, stood, uh, her classmates were able to to follow the directions, no? Kaya, bakit yun ang aking activity? Kasi yung learning styles ng mga grade 2 ko, many of them are manipulate, yung ma manipulative learners, no? Yung, um, 
they they use their hands no ayan they want to move around no kaya ang ang, ang language lesson namin no it's not really listening it's more of ayan it's more of making them do activities no and in so doing they use the the target language okay so uh it paves the way to connecting what is learned in school to real life world rather than isolated facts and information okay so remember that when we design the the modules okay the milks no the learning competencies must be uh, connected in such a way that students will see the whole forest the whole thing okay so what are the objectives no yeah why do we need to do this it fosters security and satisfaction why because uh we see students no uh trying to learn no their own uh their own way of learning no it promotes cooperative learning it develops sense of values okay yan it develops self direction it fosters creativity it provides opportunities for social action and yan integrative teaching strategies also evaluate learning their own learning okay so uh here uh we can do integrative activities in a unit no so unit planning many of you know that already no when you do your lesson study you sit together and look at the unit no study the unit all right and there are three kinds of units of work no it may be subject matter units the units are organized around the usual textbook chapters or topics or around major generalization generalizations and principles and then yeah there uh, it centers our interests no so we call them center of interests units okay the units are based on the interests of uh, students their felt needs their dominant purpose or the combination of this and integrative experience units the units which aim at learning product which is change behavior and the adjustment of the individual okay as a result of their experiences okay so these are the characteristics of uh, the learning experiences for meaningful integrative activities no why am i focusing on learning experiences because this is the vehicle by which the most uh, essential learning competencies can be achieved okay so it must be problem based no yeah it must be contextualized no it must contextualize learners uh, comprehension and scope of experience it must foster continuous development and it must be cooperatively planned by teachers and students right okay so these are the three modes of integrative teaching strategies no as i mentioned before we can have thematic teaching content based instruction and focusing inquiry okay so when do we do thematic teaching yan how do we do it we decide on a unit theme that will allow all group members to enter into the integration process then identify the major concepts to serve as suitable integrating lens for the study okay then web the topics for the study okay by it may be by subject or by learning area or around a concept and theme no it's important that teachers brainstorm on some essential understandings or generalizations no that we expect our students to uh, uh to to derive okay then brainstorm essential questions also huh? remember that we have to train our students how to ask the most important questions okay then these uh, uh processes and complex and bullet uh, key skills to be emphasized in a unit instruction and activities usually these are complex uh this are the demonstration of uh, complex uh, performances okay for each week 
and discipline in the unit write instructional activities to engage learners with essential questions and processes. Okay? And then think of culminating activities. All right? Okay? And design, of course, a scoring guide or a rubric, no? Which should be uh, agreed upon no? by the students and the teacher. Kayang-kaya nyo pong gawin, gawin nyo, no? Kung meron kayong uh, Google Drive, uh, tawag yan, uh, meron kayong parang survey, meron ganun sa, sa ano eh, no? Yung, yung, yung may pa-survey kayo or you can also use your Google survey forms so that you can, you can um, gather, no? Uh, the thoughts of your students, okay? Now, we can also use inquiry, no? Yan. We can focus on inquiry, all right? Where the instructional approach engages students in, in investigating real-world questions that will help them acquire and analyze information, develop and support propositions, provide solutions, okay, design technology and art products that demonstrate their thinking and, they, and make their learning visible. Huh? So, meron tayo isang term dyan, visible learning. Okay? Kasi we need to see if, act, uh, if learning actually took place. Right? And so, those are the processes okay, for inquiry. No? Yeah. We uh, categorize them as low-level process, but they are equally important because they serve as a, a jumping board no? to acquiring high-level processes. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, I know most of you know them. Um, and make sure that um, uh, these high-level processes will be part of your modules. Okay? And of course, we have content-based instruction or the CBI. Oh, favorite po ito ng mga language teachers, no? Where uh, we teach the a content and the target language at the same time. Okay? So this is centered on the academic needs and the interests of learners and crosses the barrier between the language and the subject matter courses. All right. So, yeah, content-based instruction emphasizes connection to real life and real world skills. Okay? So, uh, here, we see that students will have more opportunities to use the content, knowledge, and expertise, okay, to the class. All right. So, here we see combinations of uh, subjects where we can do CBI, okay? Uh, for English, you can use science as your content. For math, you can use, like, uh, the civics, no, subjects as the content. No? May mga survey dyan, kung ano yung lumabas sa mga research. And you can use uh, both, no, math and civics. You can teach... English, okay, in, uh, like for example, literature and history, okay, you can also use science and math, health and language, okay, and so before I uh, end my presentation, I'd like to leave you with this uh, poem, no, so it has, it has been my guiding uh uh, it, it, it has been my guiding star when I interact with learners, okay? So, siguro pati na rin sa mga parents to. And I think this poem uh, uh, illuminates no? what essential learning is, okay? So, read with me. If I had my child to raise over again. If I had my child to raise over again. I'd finger paint more and point the finger less. I'd do less correcting and more connecting. I'd take my eyes off my watch and watch more with my eyes. I would care to know less and know to care more. 
I'd take more hikes and more uh and fly more kites. I'd stop playing serious and seriously play. I would run through more fields and gaze at more stars. I do more hugging and less tugging. I would be firm less often and affirm much more. Build I'd build uh, self-esteem first and the house later. I teach less about the love of power and more about the power of love. So this has been shared by another teacher, Diane Lumans. Okay? So with this, uh, I'd, uh, I'd like you to, uh, to reflect no, on, on what you have learned from our from our session and uh, transform our VUCA situation into another positive VUCA world. So instead of thinking of V in VUCA as volatile, we can, we can think of the term vital. No? So we have to immer immerse our students with vital okay experiences okay instead of uncertainty yan we have to create more uh, experiences that will uplift them so you instead of uh, uncertainty it must be uplifting no and then for complexity we can transform it to being consensus all right so siguro after all of these uh, experiences uh, I, I'd like to think positively that students will be more and more conscientious. No? Kasi nakita nila how teachers really are so conscientious in preparing lessons for them. And instead of ambiguity, yan, we can uh, change it, we can transform it into being authentic. Okay? So the new book of world will be vital uplifting, conscientious, and authentic. So with that, see you in our next uh, uh, Abiva Teach webinar series. Good afternoon. God bless you all.